sorry about this, guys. This is, I got thrown no worries. This last minute, so. No uh, worries. You're good, you're good. Uh... Yeah, get used to the, the yeah. names here. So I'm looking at so Dra Stark Darth Drago, Soaring, Atlas, Louise. I think Rachel, Rachel Atlas, or DPS. I was talking to Jack about this last night. Yeah. Well, so I'm just going to refer Atlas or Rachel. Yeah, right? Atlas, Atlas, Rachel. Atlas I'm thinking... is, Atlas is um, going to be support. Rachel oh, Atlas Rose, is support, okay. Rachel Rose is DPS. Fractal is a tank. Mm -hmm. Soaring's a tank. Drago is DPS, and Shark is support. Perfect. Right okay. Now. Yeah, we see... So I'm... Wreck-It Bob, you just want Roasted to Man. Do you just want you just want to call them Yeah, Man. yeah, we're just making sure we know how to pronounce all the uh, the other guys' no. names, because sometimes there's some weird ones. And you're we just want to say We just wanted dolphin. to know if your uh, audio is coming through. So... Uh, there's not currently any noises I can hear. I don't know if you can, like... What usually in a lobby makes noises? Like, if you if you were to go to, like... Nothing right Your now. profile for a sec? Yeah, yeah. So... I don't know if you were to click something that might in game that might give us some indication if we're hearing anything because i there is like usually a little bit of lobby background music right yeah, honestly I'll, i don't remember i'll find out in just a minute one second perfect if we need to cast without audio we can it's just it makes it a lot difficult a yeah. lot of difficult to cast with audio so that's where we're just viewed right yeah. on the main thing we just want to make sure when the game goes they can't hear Yeah, but that's the problem. They can't hear anything right now. That's what I wanted to say. <laughs> so, do you want to? How often do you want to break? Just after every match, we get like a little analysis and then break, or just when, just when we're done talking. Yeah, yeah. We'll. It'll be pretty fluid. Um, if if for any reason they don't ready up right away after you go through the little match preview. I'll just say, first match tonight's going to be Li Zhang Tower. Looks like that's not going to be the case. No, this is Li Zhang Tower. Can you hear now, no, guys? This is, this is the actual game. Are we live? No. What if we are live? Why would you say that? <laughs> Give me funny. Alright, can you guys hear the game sound now? I can hear Yes, we can. Perfect, I'll stay yep. muted now. Thanks. You can hear it. Yep, let me know when you're starting the stream, and then good to go. Can't hear the audio. You can't. Oh yeah, you might want to join. I've clicked the stream. Oh, on, I'm in the so call. I started everything up call. already. Oh, oh, I have to watch. So we're good to go right now. Okay, so our audio is coming through. Perfect. Well, audio is welcome. Through. Yep. Is the stream started? And are we? Yes, stream. Broadcast? Stream and broadcasting is started already. Yep. Okay, awesome. So, welcome fans of CSP Overwatch. My name is Han Swanson, and I am joined by my co-caster, Jules. Hey, everybody. We have a great match planned for you this evening. Your CSP Bears will be playing the Lakeland University Muskies out of Plymouth, Wisconsin. This is the Bears' fourth game with an Ace Star League. And we'll jump right into it. First map of the night is going to be Li Zhang Tower. Yeah, so both of these teams are going to be looking to... Uh, engage around the pit, but if they're getting if they're gonna go in the pit, they don't want to commit for too long here, Hans. Yeah, CSP looks like they're able to get to that high ground first. That's gonna be great for them. No picks coming up from either side. We saw both immortality fields getting thrown out and quickly removed. Looks like CSP, they're gonna start marching down as the control point is starting to unlock. They're playing really well around this corner, and Drago is the first to fall on the side of CSP, but a window already available as well from Wreck It Wob. That's going to be some big damage coming out from the Muskies and CSP. They're forced to drop down, but they have this control point. If they can hold it for a little bit longer, that'd be great. Fractal already with a shatter connects on a lot of heroes, but without the rest of his team to back him up, he's going to struggle to find any true value out of that. And the Muskies are taking this point. Yeah, as I was saying, Hans, um, in this specific map, you want to be careful about staying in that lower point. As you can see, the Muskies were able to just hold the high ground and pressure the Bears and just get more value in that. Yeah, and game. well, Muscle Braun taking out two with one of his concussion mines. CSP, they're struggling because they're going to be back at their spawn, and the Muskies can set up right at this door with three and almost four alts available. Yeah, that's going to be huge. It looks like 
CSP also has three ults as well. So they'll they'll hope to get a good grab. It looks like, you know, the muskies may be grouped around that, that door. Oh, and... Yeah, Soaring is throwing out that grab, but with the immortality field coming out from Wreck-It Rob, they're not going to be able to get a whole lot. Soren dropping the Deadeye, taking out one, and CSP Bears, they're falling, and they're back at their spawn, and they're going to have to regroup here and try to push in to this main point. Yeah, and still no window commit from the muskies here. The window's going to be huge on this specific choke here. I mean, it just almost perfectly fits. Yeah, they can fit that window right in that door, and it does come out here. We saw the shatter dropped from Fractal as well, but Drago able to somehow leap over onto the back line, taking out two and then taking out the third with his right click. And man, the Muskies losing a lot of heroes there. CSP in excellent engagement there, even though that, you know, that window came out and that was massive for them. They're going to be able to take this. And they're ticking up at 20% with to the Muskie 7. I didn't know Reaper had that vertical. I mean, how did he do that? Was that a Lu Lucio boop or something? <laughs> you know, I think he got launched there. I think it possibly could have been Muscle Bronze Concussion Mine. Really an unfortunate situation for the Muskies. They accidentally ended up booping Drago back right onto them. And yeah, about as bad as it can get. But man, great Diva Bomb taking out two of the CSP Bears. And the CSP Bears, they're not really grouped up super well here. The Muskies, they're just able to march onto this point, and it looks like they're going to be able to cap this with not really a whole lot of trouble. Yeah, and if they're able to, you know, stall them a little bit more, there's not much time left. The Bears really have to look to pierce through this little window again and look for another good ult. Here. Yeah, you know, the Muskies, they're slowly getting closer and closer to that 99%. We see the Coalescence coming out from Shark, but with that Shatter, it's able to quickly castle the, cancel that Muscle Brawn. Excellent tire taking out two. The point is ticking up. 93, 94%, and I don't think that... Oh, here comes the Diva from CSP. They're trying to mount an overtime attack here. Shark is going to be left alone on the point. He's the only one there. Gets taken out. Overtime slowly taking away. Fractal does fall, and the Muskies able to take this 100 percent to 47. yeah and although the bears did manage to win one fight the muskies are looking dominant here so far um their positioning was was excellent most of the way but i mean there's still there's definitely still hope for the bears they got 50 percent they just gotta kind of you know be a little more careful i think yeah a little bit more careful and we saw some big alts from the side of the muskies we saw them get great value out of the diva bomb the junk rat tire when you take out two heroes and it becomes a 6v4, that's a much, much harder engagement and oftentimes you find yourself losing that fight and there's not much you can do. So from CSP, we're seeing a little bit of a change up of lineups here. What are we seeing on that side? Yeah, we're seeing the Fractal Ball, which is going to be always a, always a treat to watch. I'm really excited for the Fractal Ball. Uh, he's going to be looking to disrupt the back line of... Yeah. Um, the Muskies, and especially on this point, he could possibly get some knockoffs. Yeah, soaring on the D.Va as well. We see the dive tanks from CSP. They're going to be looking to jump on that back line. But on the side of the Muskies, they went with that Symmetra and were able to teleport onto that point and set up before CSP had even a chance to pose an offensive. So they're going to have a great position here going in, especially with those Symmetra turrets up. That's going to make Drago's life very difficult flying around in there. And man, it's getting close. They almost managed to get this point, but with Fractal contesting, it's gonna be a little difficult. And there it goes. The Muskies able to get that point. The CSP Bears, they do have some heroes still here. They're gonna be looking to take this right back, but without the numbers, they were able to get one pick. So this is actually a pretty even engagement. Drago does fall as well as the Diva getting demecked, and the Muskies able to clean up here. Soren getting some big damage here at the end, and they're taking up 18% and a team kill. Shark was able to get the initial pick, which was actually really good. He got the pick on the McCree, I believe, but they just weren't able to quite follow it up. Uh, it, it looks like they have, you know, their initial engagement is looking really nice. It's just when they got to getting in close quarters, some there was some value trade-off wasn't quite there. So. Yeah, so we saw Fractal here jumping out on the back line is able to force out the immortality field. And Fractal dropping the mines, knowing that that was down, hoping to get some big damage in here. They're going around the back. Forcing the Muskies to play really defensively. They're going to have to be looking multiple directions. Rachel Rose does fall. We have the big shield out from the Symmetra. And here we go. CSP, they're jumping in. But Anna LaRose does fall. And this is going to be tough. With that shield, you know, I think the Muskies able to play around that so well. They could 
avoid any of the damage that those CSP poke and dive players were able to deal, and they're capturing this rather well, 70% to CSP's aid. Yeah, it looks like... Yeah, and Rosa <laughs> able to take out Race of the Rose, that's going to stagger the CSP team even further, but we did see Dolphin Man, unfortunately, charge right off the map. He's going to have to hurry it back to spawn if he wants to get to his team to help this defense. 86%, this is getting very close to going the way of the Muskies. Fractal's on the back line. He's going to be ready to jump in and force the overtime. Jumping in on that back line while the tanks from the Muskies are focused on that door. But man, the rest of his team is just getting picked off. We have two environmental kills coming out from the Muskies. And with that, map number one goes the way of the Muskies. Yeah, and that was a dominant performance from the Muskies. They were just able to rally in the face of disarray and disorder as the dive comp attempted to get... And, and sometimes succeeded to get the first pick off, the Muskies somehow were able to just, you know, s sit there, stabilize, and and still win the fight. Yeah, and here we see play of the game. Oscar Braun able to get that concussion mine two kills. That was a great play there, and that won them that fight. It, that's great value to have out of something that really is not on that long of a cooldown. Yeah. But big damage, nonetheless. I'm, I'm, you have that small window. The Junkrat can just spam his, you know, spam his attacks right in there. It's hard not to get value, I think. So, the Muskies are able to take the first map. What does that mean for the rest of this match, Jules? Yeah, so this is going to be a best of five match. That means we'll have, you know, first to three will win here. Um, we're going to have a different... Uh, I believe we'll have a different kind of map on the next one, right? Yeah, we'll have a different kind of map, and it will be up to CSP to decide what they feel comfortable with playing here, because they did lose that first map. They do have the choice of map or map two, and we're gonna see what they decide. I'm assuming, you know, they're gonna look to, for something yeah. they feel comfortable with, something they know well. So we if will- If I had to guess, King's Row is likely your odds. What do you yeah, think? King's Row, obviously a map they feel very comfortable on, and you know, we'll have to see. They're gonna huddle, they're gonna talk things over, they're gonna decide that, and we will be right back after a short break. to Rialto. Initiating match. And we're back. It's like CSP is opting to play on the Rialto map. This is, you know, one of the newer maps was not with Overwatch when the game initially launched. And I know from experience that CSP, they like to run a lot of a lot of divey heroes on this, just with the wide open spaces. You can see some great play, especially around this river. What are we going to be looking for here as CSP is trying to bounce back from that first map loss? Yeah, we're going to be looking for the aggression and the initial picks um, from CSP. Those were working pretty well before, but then they also need to collapse after that happens. Yeah, it looks like the Muskies are going to be on defense here first. What are we seeing from their lineup? Yeah, so... We're looking at, it looks like one person hasn't picked yet, but we're actually looking at an Orisa Roadhog composition. And what that means is, I mean, it's unusual. It's it's fun. Roadhog? Yeah, Roadhog. I mean, very rarely have seen Roadhog as of late. And man, Roasted Banan, if he can get some hooks, possibly get some environmental kills, getting some pickoffs can always cause some havoc. I 
have some experience playing against Roadhogs, and they make the game very difficult. Yeah. It looks like we're going to have a quick pause here. It looks like the Muskies are having a little bit of technical difficulties selecting a hero here and locking in, so we will most likely have to remake here. But while that, with that being said, I believe we do actually see what CSP is going to be opting for their lineup. Yeah, I think... You know, that's that's accurate from CSP. I'm really excited for this road. I can't stop talking about this Roadhog here. I mean, yeah. on the side of CSP, what are we seeing? So on the side of CSP, we're seeing more of a brawl comp again. Yeah. They love. I mean, they love to go back to the Rhine. I think. Yep. We saw. Cool with. We saw the Rhine. We saw. Also saw a Genji and a Soldier. So no, both no, heroes, no, Soldier, can sprint around some corners, get some flanks going, and also plays very well behind those two shields that we saw them running. Genji. If Genji can hop around, get into that back line, that can be huge, right? Get some picks. And the Reflect can be devastating if you don't have good discipline in making sure you don't shoot at him while he's reflecting. Can get some big damage in, but you, we'll have to see. You know, CSP, a very different lineup than what we saw on the control point maps. This could be great, so. I'll tell you what, Hans, I like the double shields from CSP against the Roadhog Arissa. Yeah. As much as I want to see as many hooks as possible, with double shields, it's going to be really hard to get. I wonder if we'll see them switch now, actually, that um, they get a remake. Yeah. We'll see. You know, we will see, and looks like, unfortunately, we will have to be remaking this lobby, so it'll just be a couple moments. And while that is happened, happening, we will just go on a quick little break. Don't go anywhere. Why am I put into the team, though? to Rialto. Initiating match. And we are back. It's like the lobby has been remade. Both teams readying up for map number two. Hans, I'm curious if we're going to see any adjustments from these teams. Oh, it looks like they're locking in the same exact thing we saw previously, and I'm, I'm quite excited for this. We see Muscobron and Soren on the Widowmaker. Wow, this is going to be very interesting here. I think Soren gonna have to be going to have to be very careful, especially if Drago can get back there and force her off of her high ground position, which she is most likely to take. But so, I mean, the Roadhog helps with that, right? If, if the Genji goes back, the Roadhog can possibly hook him. So I think Drago has to be very careful here. Yeah, and with Muscobron on the Farah, you know, CSP, they have the answers coming out of the gate with Rachel Rose on the 70s. We have another Roadhog. Yeah, another Roadhog. The Roadhog v. Roadhog mirror matchup. I absolutely am love to see it, and I'm going to be excited to see what they do here. Muscobron is taking this higher position, going around and able to take out the CSP Soldier. That's a great pick Huge off there. Pick off. When you're damage boosted like that, the damage from the Farah is just absurd. And man, we already see some insane Roadhog plays soaring, able to get the hook. The environmental kill, that is great. CSP, they're pushing up this point. They took a couple, but the team seem to be trading evenly here. Wait, Soren getting that pick on Shark. It's going to be a lot of healing. Sorely missed from the side of the bears, but Fractal, he's pushing all the way up. He's not letting the muskies get back to this point and mount any sort of defense. 
And uh, the bears are doing such a better job than last map at, you know, not collapsing instantly when one dies. You saw there, a couple got picked off from CSP, but they just kept turning forward. We'll have to kept see here, value. the muskies, they're in a position. They could try to contest this. Oscar Brown went around and tried a little bit of a flank, but Drago able to get that kill. Roast a banana falls as well, and CSP, there are nothing that's stopping them pushing this cart. Yeah, and it looks like CSP kind of did like a reverse card on them. I mean, they're getting more value from the Roadhog than I think the Muskies are at this point. Yeah, you know, I thought I thought it was only going to be the Muskies running it, but I, I love, I absolutely love to see it. So we'll see here. This second portion of the map has a little bit more tighter angles, especially through this central alleyway here. And with that, you know, you can see some great value from the Farah when they get all close. Those rockets happen to connect on a lot of heroes. Fractal, already with the Gravity Flux, able to take the Muskie's Reinhardt into the air, but with the Immortality Field, wreck -It Rob is going to be able to keep his Reinhardt alive. Great job from Drago, pressing, pressuring out wreck -It Rob, able to get that kill. Excellent job there, forcing the Muskies to separate, and CSP, they just keep on rolling. Awesome. I mean, you saw how important that Baptiste was and how important it is to deal with him. Without that Baptiste, they have just have a lot less sustain, and the bears are able to just roll. Yeah. Especially without the Baptiste, the Mercy just really isn't able to match the healing output to what CSPA is able to put out in damage. And here, they keep on coming. Ruby Swift does fall rather early, starring doing an excellent job on that Roadhog. And here we go. Muscobron is going to have... The rockets coming down from above CSP, they're going to have to be very careful, but with a hero like Roadhog, they're going to be able to get that hook possibly canceling them. Far is doing some sort of dance on this rooftop here, Hans. I don't know. Yeah, staying up above, trying to disorient the CSP players, and man, gets instantly slept, punished for it heavily. Roasted Banan with that amplification matrix, miss, miss with the whole hog able to get one kill but csp they still have the heroes here fractal does fall but with the blade coming in immortality field taken out by that that's going to delay the blade a little bit but man when drago has that blade there's not much you can do to stop it taking out both of the supports and csp they keep this push alive they have three four heroes on the point but man great shatter there will they have the follow-up muscle Braun is able to get in there deal some big damage with the rockets when those heroes are stationary those rockets connect every single time great job that shatter was excellent stopped csp in their tracks yeah and there we saw how important the soldier pickoff is if if muskies managed to pick off the soldier i don't see a extremely effective way to deal with the far as uh, yeah, it's almost free reign for that farah you know Farah has that rocket barrage still, as well as the soldier on the side of CSP. We got two DPS alts, those can be big. Fractal, another Gravitic Plus, connects on a lot of heroes, and here we see the alts come from both sides. Transcendence is being popped by CSP, stops most of the damage from that rocket barrage, and the soldier ultimate coming out from CSP, able to get good value. Soaring's the only one on the side of CSP with an alt up, but they can very well use this to push them off the point, stop that contest, and get a maybe a cheeky little cap here. They have four minutes left, and that could be some good time on the board for them. Yeah, this could this could be huge for CSP. Yep, and here we go. Here comes the whole hog, forcing the muskies back. Immortality Field, Wreck-It Rob, every single time he gets near the fight, is getting forced to drop that because of Drago's Genji. And this fight, getting rather disoriented, Soren able to deal some big damage out of the CSP tanks, playing on that man with the shotguns excellent job there reaper doing some big damage wreck it rob the window comes out they maybe didn't need that there at the end yeah but they, they it's have already won but wreck it rob an excellent job in that fight keeping out of genji's way keeping alive and managing to stand the entire musky team musky's doing a good job keeping that point but that cart got awfully close csp they're gonna have a two three good fights left in them considering how much time they still have left in the bank yeah and they're gonna I mean, the cart's so close, they can just kind of, if they have a bunch of ults, they can kind of just use all the ults, so they're going to look up maybe to charge the ults here. We'll see if they, we'll see if they hold the blade. So here we go. The Death Blossom was popped by Soren, but because of the excellent stagger from CSP, they're able to fall back, not get caught up in that. They did a great job. That ult went to waste. We have Ruby Swift dropping the armor aura for his team. Those heroes are going to be much tankier, but looks like we're going to have a nano blade being dropped. That can be some big damage. Wreck-It Rob does fall, but if they're only able to get one from that, I think the muskies might be happy from that, but here comes Fractal. Dropping the Gravitic Plus, connects on three heroes. Excellent alt there, taking out three. 
Soren's in the back line. Let's see what he can do. Dealing some damage. It's a meter away. CSP almost there. Taking it with 2 minutes 12 seconds left. Excellent alt usage there from the Bears. Yeah, and that's just that's just such a, you know, such a um, courageous play from the Bears there. Um, you know, they lost Soaring right away at the beginning of the fight, but they still decided Nano Blade, and it managed to work out because they trusted, they leaned on their tanks, they leaned on um, Fractal's ult. And Sigma, and also they leaned on the visor. Yeah, and Rachel. you know, while they were only able to get one kill from that nano blade, that one kill was on the Baptiste. And without that immortality field, Fractal was able to go in and take care of business, getting three. I think that's my candidate for play of the game so far. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you could choose one kill, that's what you want to go for. So, yeah. absolutely. Let's see here. DSP, they're going to be moving to defense here. What do we see from their side? Yeah, so it looks like uh, CSP are going for keeping with the Roadhog. They liked how that Roadhog performed, and I can't say I disagree with them. No, CSP, they're keeping it the same as what they had previously. It was working for them. They did a great job with that, and, you know, I can't blame them. They did yeah. an excellent job, but on the side of the Muskies, we see a little bit of a different line up here. Yeah, I think, well, they had the Reinhardt before, but the addition of Zari instead of Roadhog kind of shows a more traditional brawl lineup here. They're going to be looking to get value about close engagements, getting up in their faces, and just swinging that hammer. Yeah, you know, and with the DPS line on the side of the Muskies, it's much more oriented towards poking them from afar. And with that, with that, you know, CSP, if they're not able to jump onto that back line... I can very well see the Muskies getting some picks here and winning some fights. But man, speaking of picks, soaring, excellent hook there, but right back at him. Muscle Brun gets a headshot and then connects on Shark with the Storm Arrows. Excellent Hanzo play there. They're pushing up. They've got the numbers advantage, and CSP, they're kind of crumbling here on their defense. Yeah, and as good as the hook was, they just weren't able to follow it up uh, as well. And it looks like the Brawl lineup is, is working out so far. Yeah. They're able to just get up in their faces and say, you have to do something about us. Yeah, I love this Hanzo. This Hanzo has been exceptional so far. If CSP isn't able to really get in close and force him, oh, another Whoa, great pick. kill, taking out this Hinata. Man, this man is on fire here. Yeah, and he's looking for more here as they, they back up. Yeah, CSP looking like they're going for the contest, but I don't think they have the heroes to back it up. The Roadhog's all that left, and man, also Run already has the dragons. He is just destroying the CSP line. Yeah, and we that that is a that's another candidate for playing the game with no ult there with Best LeBron kind of popping off. Yeah, excellent job there, and I think Drago really needs to do a better job getting in there, possibly taking out Muscle LeBron before Muscle LeBron can just sit there in the back line and do anything. And there we see again taking out the soldier CSP with only Fractal being able to provide them a shield. They don't really have much to hide behind when Muscle LeBron is raining down arrows. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, they might be considering the switch, but we'll see. I mean, they have the Sigma shield, but it just hasn't been protective enough so far, I think. And Muscle Brown has found yeah, the cracks. He has in that absolute defense. free reign. Yeah. Let's see, we got a lot of big ults coming up from both teams, but man, if if this damage keeps on coming up from the side of the Muskies, they're going to be able to keep this going. CSP looks like they're deciding this is the time they want to contest. They got that one pick, so the Muskies are going to be without that hero. Great sleep up there, able to take out both supports on the side of the muskies, and I think they should retreat here unless they want to get staggered even further. There we go, Muscle Brown falls much later than his wow. teammates, and great fight there. Look for CSP. at the ults from CSP; they're all ready. Yeah, CSP's gonna have all six ults up, and if we look at the side of the muskies, I think they will too. So this next fight. Look to see the sparks fly. I'm curious. Yeah, I'm curious if this is gonna be, you know, turning to a nuclear Armageddon once one ult goes off. Are we gonna see all six ults? That's a very real possibility. Very curious to see who's gonna be the first one to pop that ult. And it looks like it'll be Wreck It Bob with that couple But man, here comes the Sigma lift, getting a lot of connections here. But that healing just too much. Great shatter from the Muskies, Reinhardt, able to get some big value, but the Nano Blade taking out so many of the Muskies heroes, the back line was just decimated. But meanwhile, the Muskies heroes, they're still pushing this cart, so the tank line able to take care of Minnesota on one end, but without their back line, they're gonna have to be a little careful. Drago is gonna be running around, has to be so careful that Zarya would be, and that's one thing, he cannot deflect. 
gets punished for it. And man, the muskies, they did a great job there. They focused on those heroes. That shatter was huge for them. And they were able to push through and with their tank lineup fully intact and one support, they were able to clean the house. Great rotations from Muskie there. Yeah, CSP looks like they tried to contest a little bit here before they were able to get to the next checkpoint. Fractal jumping in with the ball here. I hope he knows that they already got to that checkpoint. They might need to back up here considering the Muskie's spawn is very close. Yeah, they're they're looking kind of unstoppable after that fight. Even though it was oh like Fractal getting taken out. You hate to see that. He was so low. I don't know what he was doing there, jumping in. Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe stalling for some time, but I don't know how much that does at this point. Yeah, you know, and with the Wrecking Ball being such a tanky hero, you just if you die like that, you feed so much ult. It looked like he actually. Monkey. Yeah, he wanted to switch there. Yeah, so yeah. Fractal wanted to switch back onto the Sigma, deciding the Wrecking Ball. Possibly only chose the Wrecking Ball to try to get a little bit of a contest, and when he saw that didn't happen, decided now was the time to switch back on. We see the Soldier ult, that Visor, coming out from the side of CSP, able to get some good value, but the rest of the Muskies team just hides right behind the wall, and now they're coming in with full force, taking out two. Fractal's still there, gets the Nano Boost, looking to deal some damage, is manages to take out two, and the Muskies, they don't really have a lot of heroes left, but CSP, they don't either. They only have their two tanks on this point, and without the healing, they can deal some big damage. What a turnaround from CSP there. I thought it was lost for sure after their DPS has kind of went fractal. Alive. Somehow was staying alive there to the last second, but then Soren comes in, takes out both tanks. Man, with this musky Zarya fully charged with energy, just dealing incredible damage, taking out two heroes. Grav coming out as well. Drago, not much he can do against that Reinhardt hammer. Fractal rolling in onto the point, trying to contest this, trying to contest this for as long as he can to get his team on this point, but with less than a meter left, they do not have time to stagger or wait. Dragons comes out, but CSP wasn't able to hold there. 2 minutes 21 seconds for the Muskies. 21 seconds advantage and really flawless play there towards the later part of that that cart push. Yeah, I think they kind of just pulled it together at the end there. They were struggling a little during the beginning, but... And on that last fight, you know, we saw the Muskies they were able to target those supports. And with the CSP tanks being the only ones that were left, they really couldn't do much, especially with that full energy Zarya. That just starts to melt tanks after a little while, especially with those hitboxes being so big. Yeah, I think they're really good at targeting not only the supports, but also the DPS. When the DPS positioning went a little too far, they almost instantly killed them. Um, and But I don't think the CSP bears are necessarily too upset. It's pretty even here. They both did very well on attack. Very formidable on attack, so I think this is this is looking to be a very close match. Yeah, this is certainly close, and you know, CSP comfortable on this Rialto mat. You have to remember this is what they chose, and now both teams were able to make it to the final checkpoint, and this is where we really need to see CSP bring it all together. They chose this map. They're down 0-1. This is the time they need to get this push as far as they can in the allotted time they have so that they can give themselves the best shot they have on defense to hold this and take a map on the muskies. Yeah, and it looks like the muskies are leaning more into the brawl comp. They actually switched off the Baptiste into Brig. Um, and that's that's going to mean they're just looking for more close engagement. Yeah, and sticking on the Hanzo as well. If Muskobron can get some headshots here, that can be huge in delaying this CSP push. But at the moment, that's not going to be the case. Drago doing a great job rotating around, able to get on that back line, taking out the Hanzo. But CSP, they're a little low. They're all in that immortality field, trying to stay alive. That keeps them alive, able to get healed up and deal some big damage there. Drago going in with his team. This, the CSP DPS is just shredding the Muskies lineup. What a huge fight for CSP, able to turn it around with that her immortality field. It looks like they're all low, and then they kill them almost flawlessly. Yeah, let's see here. I'm sure the Muskies are going to try to contest this as much as they can, considering, you know, there's only a minute left. If they can win a fight here, the next fight will most likely be CSP's last. And, man, able to get both of the CSP DPSs, that's going to make this fight much more difficult for CSP. We'll have to see if they decide to back up and get their teammates together before pushing in, but I don't know if the Muskies are going to let them have that. They're pushing in here. They're getting very aggressive knowing CSP has two members down. They have to be very careful if they want to avoid getting picked off. We see the Soldier on the side of the Muskies doing a great flank, hopping onto that bridge, jumping on that Zenyatta and getting that kill. CSP, they're down a hero, but they still push in. 
supports from CSP are down. CSP, they have to be so careful. Fractal dropping the Gravitic Flux, but without any follow-up, there's not going to be much there. Drago falls as well. 24 seconds left. CSP, they have very little time to regroup and get back on this point if they want to push it any further. They're going to have to be so careful here. They cannot afford to make any mistakes if they want to keep this point alive. Yeah, this is looking really hard. If CSP can make this, it'll be a miracle. They also have a nano-boosted Ryan probably incoming. Oh man, Soren flanking once again and... Roasted Banan got a little cheeky there. Gets punished for it. CSP, they dropped the window. They're going to have to get onto that that cart and keep this push alive. Dragon's coming out, forcing CSP to stay away from the point. But with that, oh, great visor from Soren, Saving it for the perfect moment. Taking out both of those squishy heroes from CSP. Drago coming in, saying, I need to get some revenge for my teammates. Getting very low. Taken out by Musterbond. Fractal's the only one for time. Ticking away very fast. And a great hold from the muskies. A great hold from the muskies, but I, they were probably very scared at the end there. I mean, CSP fought tooth and nail. I was I was surprised it was that close, considering the muskies had the, the the shatter with the nano boost on Ryan. Ryan died so fast. I mean, the CSP bears had a real shot there. You know, great job from CSP, but you know they got the cart a decent amount of the way. It very much looks like if they can hold this first corner and they can keep that hold alive. Or the full two minutes twenty one seconds, they will win this map. Yeah, and they demonstrated in the in the first or the, sorry, the first attack of the muskies that I believe the bears held that little first area the longest of all the areas. Yeah, you know I think they did a great job there, and wow, it looks like Soren might be picking Bastion. We'll have to see, but the only thing we can really count on is the current hero picks from the side of CSP as they got to get set up on their defense. So what do we see here? Oh, uh, we see. Quite a change. It looks like we have Reinhardt instead of Sigma, uh, and we have Zarya as well. They're leaning into their brawl. I think that's what they're most comfortable with here. Yeah, and I, I have to say, I think I support CSP's decision. With that brawl comp, I think they'll have a much better time, and that specifically that Reinhardt, playing around this first doorway here. Because in reality, if they don't hold this doorway, they could very easily lose. Yeah, this is going to be all at any... They're going to have to also watch out for this Bastion. If this Bastion gets one pick, yeah. it could just be over. Soren staying on the Bastion, looking to break those shields. They're teleporting onto the point, doing a little bit of a pirate ship lineup here, protecting that Bastion at all cops. I don't I don't know if CSP is really prepared for this. Drago's going around. CSP supports do fall. Man, this is looking tragic. Fractal, not much you can do in the face of a Bastion Gatling gun. CSP, they're going to have to move very quick unless... They want to get back and hold this, but it's looking dire. The Bastion, no one's stopping him. He's on that point. Drago's going to have to get a Reflect or something, or else CSP ain't going to be able to do much. There's probably a few things more terrifying than just that cart rolling yeah. around the corner and seeing the Reinhardt Bastion. I mean, they, yeah. I don't think they're ready for Fractal it. Fractal rolled in trying to get that contest, but now the rest of the CSP squad, they're just not there, and it's getting close. And map number two yeah. goes the way of the Muskies. That Bastion pick was exceptional. CSP did not see it coming, they were not prepared, and they were just able to blast through all of the shields of CSP and get this map win. Yeah, just knock them off their feet. They, they, how can you be too prepared for that? So. Yeah, let's see here, let's see this all. Drago dropping the Dragon Blade, gets nano boosted, and just causes absolute havoc amongst the backline of the Muskies, but unfortunately we saw the rest of his team fall thanks to both the tanks and the muskies being alive and that support, and that was, you know, really one of the key moments of this man. Know. Like, CSP essentially won that fight in some ways, it was pretty even, but the yeah. muskies were just able to rotate fast, get on the point, and keep going. Yeah, you know, both both teams had great alts, but when, you know, it came down to it, the muskies were able to pull it together, and now we go to the next map, which is going to be a hybrid map, we'll have to see what CSP chooses, and Hybrid map. Hybrid map. Sounds like King's Road yeah, to me. King's so we will see what they decide. You know, they could always throw a little oddball. I really don't know what they have been practicing, but I'm sure they're looking for something that they know they feel comfortable with and they can make a stand because, you know, they're down 0 2 and this is where they have to make a stand. They, they got to get a little here. run going because if they lose this, this match is over. Yeah, but I like their chances, I think, on King's Row. We saw on the last map on the payload, they were effective at pushing through on attack. Yeah. It was just they hit a little bit of a hitch at the beginning of the extra yeah. extra round. Yeah. So we'll see. It looks like the next map will be King's Row, and we will be back with that after a short little break.
Entering King's Row. Initiating match. And we are back. King's Row is the map where CSP could face their ultimate fate here. Yeah, well, yeah. King's Row is gonna be the is gonna be the true key here to CSP's victory. Obviously, they have to win yeah. it for sure. This is where they have to start their comeback, unless or else they're gonna have to set their bags and get packing. So we'll see here. CSP, we see them in their spawn here, jumping around. Their lineup. I think this is most likely what it's gonna be. Shark on the Junkrat. And what else are we seeing from the CSP squad? As predicted, they go the Ryan Zarya Brawler lineup. Very good on King's Row. There's a lot of open or specific like corners and windows where Reinhardt is just very favorable. Yeah. And we're looking at the Reinhardt from the Muskies as well. So it's going to be the Ryan Ryan yeah, matchup. It's going to be excellent. I know from last spring when CSP was playing, Shark's Junkrat was devastating on King's Row. So I'm certainly excited for that. We could see Shark Week happen in front of our eyes. You know, CSP, they're going to have to be very careful with the May pick on the side of the Muskies. If Fractal gets walled out, and they do exactly that, Fractal getting walled off from his team, and they're able to get that quick kill. CSP, they didn't do a good enough job staying together, and looks like this first fight is going the way of the Muskie. Good call there, Hans. Looking psychic, and that's exactly why they picked the May. They're just looking to wall off. Wall off the Ryan, and they all get value if they kill the Ryan. He's such a big body, and they just get so much damage. We, you know, with a Ryan Zarya comp, if the Ryan falls, the rest of the team tends to because they don't have that shield soaking up a lot of that damage. Ah, oh, Drago falls. A really great fire strike on the side of Dolphin Man and CSP. They're gonna have to regroup once again. Yeah, they're just they're they're getting outvalued on this specific point by the may by the the right yeah, they're, they're getting picked off and yeah. csp they need to play a lot tighter if they want to make it through this first choke point and get onto that point yeah we really haven't seen i don't think fractal's gotten a chance because there's just been pickoffs he has got a chance to really go up there with the zarya shield on him and start hitting the other yeah oh csp first. they go through looks like the rest of the team this time does follow him trying to keep him alive and they're able to the Dolphin Man Reinhardt does fall thanks to the great damage from the CSP Reaper. Shark Tire comes out, gets one. CSP, they have the numbers advantage here. They're going to be looking to push onto this point. The Muskies, they're a little bit disjointed right now. They're going to have to get back together. Looks like that Diva is so close to being demaxed without the, the tanks from the Muskies. They're going to have a tough time. Oh, here we go. Diva Bomb coming out, able to connect onto one CSP hero. But here comes the amplification window out from Drago. The Immortality Field keeping his team alive. But man, an excellent shatter from the side of Dolphin Man. Knocks down almost the entirety of the CSP squad. Wreck-It Rob dropping the High Noon, taking out another. And man, that was an excellent Reinhardt shatter. And that really turned the tables in that fight. Oh yeah, CSP was in the commanding position. Their reactions were so good. Drago, I noticed... As soon as the melee went down, hops right over. That's, you know, that's a play they, they definitely anticipated. And it looks yeah, like this is it again. Fractal's going to have to be very careful. His team does follow him once again, keeps him alive. Fractal Shatter does come out, but doesn't connect on enough. We have the down barrier being dropped from Ruby Swift, keeping his team alive. Shark already has another tire up, able to connect on two. CSP, they have numbers here. Shark absolutely popping off. Diva Bomb onto the point, takes out another. Excellent play from those CSP heroes. Shark absolutely popping off. I, I think it's time to say it, Jules. This is Shark Week. <laughs> that was just an amazing play from Shark. Completely salvaging the fight. What can you say except it's Shark Week? Yeah, excellent job there. Two ticks for CSP. The Muskies, they're not going to be able to make it back in time. Wreck-It Rob does fall. And if CSP is able to capture this, he might get stuck at an unfortunate spawn. And, you know, the Muskies, they're running in here. Looking to try to keep this live with the Coalescence and an excellent Shatter coming out. They might be able to actually turn this. CSP was so close to capping this point, but with heroes falling left and right, I don't think they're going to be able to. Yeah, wow. Another amazing turnaround from, from Dolphin Guy. I mean, Dolphin Man, I'm sorry. Able to really capitalize on his Shatter. Yeah, the Shatter comboed with that Coalescence just dealt so much damage. That was exceptional. We've seen both Shatters from Dolphin Man just be absolutely massive. I, I'd have a hard time saying which one I liked more. 27 seconds left. This is very likely CSP's last push. Shark has the tire up, looking to be 
getting some good value out of it. Wreck-It Rob does fall, and with two heroes down, the Muskies were forced off the point, and CSP able to cap that. They just didn't, the Muskies, honestly, they just didn't stay on that point long enough, and CSP does a great job using their alts there, getting some good value, and they're onto the cart-pushing portion of this map. CSP had the alt advantage for that fight, but they also just executed very well. Yeah, you saw the, the ults come in succession. They didn't force him out oh, at the same time. Had to be so careful there. Got stuck on a little bit of ledge on that roof. Oscar Braun benefiting from that greatly. Able to get the kill onto Shark. And CSP, they're going to be a little low here. Drago gets very close to getting taken out. Those icicles deal a lot of damage, as we have seen. And here comes the tanks from the side of the muskies. Blizzard coming out. Fractal tries to charge out, but cannot do it. Gets frozen immediately. Soren throws out the bomb on top of that Blizzard, taking out the rest of the heroes that were frozen solid in their place, shattering any hopes of keeping this push alive. And 152, they're going to have to regroup, get back on this cart, and group up and have, you know, really regroup use fractal shatter well here and that's going to be their hope here in this next i think i think it's safe to say this has been a game of ultimate ability so far you've seen you've seen the uh the muskies use their ult combos ex with uh, extremely well oh and man dark able to de-mech the diva but meanwhile while that happens fractal does get caught out so you know csp with that reiner it's so important to their lineup shark oh, what a good excellent time. tire they're taking out two and with this, you know, hey, this is almost deja vu of what happened previously. <laughs> Fractal gets caught out a little bit, but the Shark Tire able to really salvage the fight. And here, Fractal is back. He's pushing up, has the shatter. But meanwhile, Dolphin Man throwing a massive shatter in the back line, but a lot of his team is not there to help follow it up. Able to get one kill on Shark. Fractal dropping the shatter as well. Here comes the sound barrier from Ruby Swift. And we see a lot of damage going both ways, but CSP, they still have their heroes up. They still have a shot at keeping this push alive if they play well around this corner as they have been. Shark making his way back to the point. Neither team giving way. Fractal getting frozen, separated from his team. The support's doing a great job keeping him alive. That amplification matrix comboed with that fire strike, dealing incredible damage, taking out both musky supports. But the Blizzard coming out from the side of the muskies gets one. And the Reaper, so close to getting taken out by that as well, but Shark, he's back. He's dealing some big damage, but great flashbang from Wreck-It Rob, taking out Shark. Soaring, drums in, gets revenge for Shark. CSP, they're so close. 13 seconds left. This will be their last push to make it to this next checkpoint. And they're on fire here. The Muskies don't look like they have the numbers. It's just the two supports. They're going to have a hard time contesting this in any real capacity. CSP, 0.1 meters away. The Muskies are making it onto the point, but Fractal saying, I don't think so. Swinging his massive hammer, taking out two, looking to get another. The immortality field is out. And man, here it goes, 0.1 meters left, Fractal's doing an excellent job, looking to keep this alive, and the payload does arrive to the next checkpoint. Great fight there from the side of the Bears. Yeah, and CSP has to be feeling so good right now. The momentum is on their side, they're playing really well, really good really good fight that last one. And I was I was very surprised that they recovered from that shatter, but I think it shattered through the main yeah. wall. There's a little bit of miscommunication. The shatter connected on a lot of the CSP heroes, but the May wall that they used actually you know kind of isolated the rest of the musky heroes from the csp oh, stun heroes shark. and shatter coming out from fractal connecting on a lot of heroes shark capitalizing on that taking wreck it rob out but we see both of these tanks coming in from the side of the muskies dealing some big damage a lot of heroes in the red for csp they're gonna have to be so careful if they want to stay alive and another shark tire coming out taking out two excellent job there it's just a lucio on the point but here we have a blizzard shark getting the kill before the blizzard the may is able to stay there but wreck it rob excellent high noon soaring slapping right back with the diva bomb csp they have the numbers they're so close they have two heroes as well as this lucio providing the healing that's that spawn for the side of the muskies is so much closer so csp they have to play airtight if they want to keep this we see the Death Blossom coming out with the Flashbang from Wreck-It Rob. There's an extra job! Fractal's Ball takes out two! This is getting close! The incredible grab coming out keeps all the CSP heroes bunched up. Four seconds left! CSP, can they do it? It's getting close! One meter left! Overtime! And they take the point! Excellent last fight there. Sparks flying, alts left and right. Excellent play from both sides, Jules. What do you think of that? That's about as exciting as it gets right there. Like, the ults killing everyone all at the same time. I mean, what else can you ask for? That was awesome. And it, Shark, every single ult that game, I think, got at least two people. Yeah, Shark, 
I love a good shark junk rat. On this map, he just knows it so well. He just has a little little special touch here as he's lobbing those grenades around corners and he just knows every single tire angle. I the muskies, when those tires were coming out, they didn't really know what hit them. Yeah, and I think again, just the alt usage was extremely important during that game. You saw in the last fight we saw the blizzard high noon. We saw the the wall and the sh the shatter, the wall blocking the shatter. Um and I think, you know, something about this map is making it kind of focus on focus on the alts. We're not seeing too many pickoffs before that. So, sure. Yeah, and CSP, they got to be feeling good after capping that just in the nick of time. Their defense is going to have to be very strong if they want to keep this momentum going. You see Soren possibly playing the road yeah, again. The Roadhog, which is interesting because I don't think they had too much success with the Roadhog before. Um, almost, I, as I noted before, the, the CSP was able to get more value out of it, but we'll, we'll see how it works out in this map. They're playing more of a brawl lineup, which with the Roadhog is interesting because the Roadhog you know, kind of wants to extend, yeah, well, kind of wants to... Change. I think it has some great potential here, because if Soren can get a hook, and they can turn this fight into a 5 versus 6, ESP is going to have a very hard time. It looks like the Muskies, they're rotating around to this high ground. They're going to be looking to jump on top of CSP. CSP does scout that out. Shark throwing grenades into that room, going to be able to get some big damage if those shields do end up breaking, and Shark already a quarter of the way to a rip tire. Teleporter coming out from the Muskies. They're able to get onto that high ground CSP. They're going to have to be very careful. They could get jumped on from up there. And if they're able to get up close and personal with that May, with that Reinhardt, you can see some big damage and some crucial picks coming out on the side of the Muskies. They're looking for an angle, but they haven't got one so far. Yeah, looks like Wreck-It Rob switched on to the Widowmaker here, trying to get a pick. I, I don't know if that's what the Muskies need here. I think he needs to get back with his team and help them here. CSP, they're playing really well around this hotel, making sure not to jump on anything, but Dolphin Man caught Shark getting a little cheeky, gets him with a fire strike, and now they're looking to capitalize on that. Fractal, great job countercharging there, knocks both on the ground, but the Muskies, they have more damage here. But, oh man, the Reaper dealing just incredible damage when the Reaper gets up in their face. There's not much you can do if you are the tank of the Muskies. Yeah, and that's where CSP, CSP's comp comes in just as effective in close quarters. Uh, Reaper gonna have to be very careful. Gets taken out by the May Freeze and the shot by Wreck-It Rob. CSP, they have some numbers here. Shark dropping the tire, looking to get some value. Takes out one of the supports. That's gonna be crucial here. Fractal able to get the Reinhardt kill. And with only the May left on this point, CSP, they might be able to get this, but an excellent hook from Soren. Fractal's gotta be upset about that one he didn't keep his shield up he got that hook but meanwhile sorry excellent diva bomb takes out three completely stopped all of that momentum they built up oh Dolphin and another great shatter without fractal there with the shield they have no way of blocking that able to take out drago and dmech the diva wreck it rob getting some value with this widowmaker able to take out the reaper because the reaper doesn't have much of a shot taking out that widowmaker from that far away Fractal and Shark dealing some big damage, but the May Freeze coming in takes out that entire CSP hit squad. Yeah, that looked like it was going in CSP's way again, and then they come out with the the ult. Yeah, May's Blizzard was huge there. Yeah, it was huge, and and the Roadhog was just able to sit there and shoot point blank range. So. Yeah, excellent job from the Muskies. They're able to take this, and now they're on to the payload portion of the map. See if they switch it up a little bit. Shark able to sneak around, get Wreck-It Rob with a concussion mine. And, you know, I, I'm i curious to see if they will decide to stay on that Widowmaker. They've had limited success with it, but Soren, just exceptional play, getting hooks left and right. And once they get the picks, that's the main healer from the side of CSP. CSP, they just get really low, and we see there. Fractal falls. He just got too low, and they just didn't have the healing. Shark looking to deal some damage with his tire, but Wreck-It Rob does an excellent job sniping it. Yeah, and that's huge. They're they're looking for that tire nod. Yeah, it looks like the CSP here is they're jumping on Soren. Dolphin Man's looking to come in and help his other tank friend out, dealing some damage, able to get a couple heroes. Wreck It Rob is there as well, taking out both of the DPSs from CSP. The CSP Diva is there on the point in contesting, but isn't gonna be alive for much longer. CSP does lose this fight and the Muskies, they're pushing this cart even further. It's interesting. During that Moira and Lucio both had their whole time. 
and they were very patient with them. They, they held them to the very end. And I think they may be saving them for this last little push to this next checkpoint. We see the Coalescence come out. I think that may be a little bit of bit of an early alt. DSP was just able to hide around the right side there and able to stay alive, not getting any value out of that. Fractal's getting very low, gets frozen. Soren dropping the whole but the Diva Bomb comes out, connecting on three Muskies heroes. Drago gets taken out. Wreck-It Rob, he's a little alone there. Shark coming in, trying to get that kill, does manage to connect, and looking to go on the squishies, takes out Ishvan Ivan. And man, that was excellent there. I Shark came in there at the last second, got a little bit of some stagger kills, and now he's already back up to his tire. Yeah, we'll see how the Muskies play around this next tire. It's going to be interesting, I think. Yeah, and looks like the DPS is from CSP. They're taking this high ground position a little bit. The Muskies are going to have to be very careful unless they want a tire dropping down from above, as well as a Death Blossom. Both DPS ults coming up. I don't and, know if they're ready for it, Hans. Uh, they're, they're not really in a good position. The Death Blossom does come out, takes out two, and man, getting a double kill there. Shark getting some big damage. The Blizzard does come out, but Shark able to avoid it, doing a great job playing behind that window when Shark's grenades are powered up by that window, their just damage goes off the charge. Able to get some huge connections there, and CSP able to take that point with taking to take that fight without using too many of their ults. They use the window and they use the death blossom. That's a position where they want to be. Absolutely, and they still have three, and Muskies only have two here. They're gonna. I mean, I think the Muskies in that last fight, especially, they may have been grouped up a little too That's much. Your fractal but... gets caught out a little bit, but the immortality field's gonna help keep him alive. Shark tire does go out, takes out one. And Fractal, looking to go in without that main healing from the Muskies, goes in but gets immediately charged by Dolphin Man. Excellent charge there. Takes out Fractal. They only have 48 seconds left there, so they're going to have to group up and start pushing this. Because this could very well be their last. Shatter comes out. Shark is immediately able to kill him, but the Muskies heroes, they're there. They're able to get some value, taking out Drago, taking out Shark. The Reaper is still there, but Reaper getting dangerously low. CSP looks like they're going to try to contest this. They're going to have to get in there very shortly. The Maywall comes out, blocking Fractal Shatter. That's an excellent play there from the May. Able to keep that Shatter from affecting the, the team. Fractal has a shield here. He's with his team, but gets frozen. Wreck-It Rob doing some big damage onto that tank. Less than a meter left. CSP, they're keeping this contest alive, but with all of the musky heroes up, on this point, it's going to be so difficult for CSP to get on this and really stop them, and they make it to the next checkpoint. Excellent fight there from the Muskies. Man, that Shatter block was brutal. Yeah, that was really rough, but I think he'll have it up again really soon with this composition. It looks like um, they changed from the Zarya to the Diva. I think that was way earlier, but it, it makes the matchup much more different. Able to eat those fire strikes and you know that that always helps especially stopping Dolphin Man. His shatters have been devastating. Soaring throwing out the Diva Bomb takes out two excellent value there. The Muskies they're getting forced back here. Fractal very low. He's charging in though. He knows he has his team behind him. The Coalescence is popped from the side of the Muskies maybe a little late trying to keep the team alive but it wasn't enough. CSP is going to love to see that that got popped. You know, two times in a row we saw that Coalescence go to waste. Yeah, and again, it was interesting they held it for so long before because I think usually with Coalescence... Oh, and we see the barrier here. Yeah, Drago threw out the Amplification Matrix, but it gets immediately domed by an Icicle. And man, great Shatter coming out, connecting on a lot of heroes, but that Blizzard, these Blizzards have been incredible from the Muskies. They're able to get so much value there. It just immobilizes the CSP squad and CSP. They get to decide which door they're coming out of and how they're going to go about this. Because with 10 seconds left, this is going to be the last fight. Shark Tire out onto the point, taking out the Reinhardt. Fractal throws down the Shatter. That's going to connect on a lot of heroes thanks to Shark taking out that Reinhardt. Fractal's on the point. He's swinging, but he's going to have to be so careful to not get taken out. Immortality Field drops. Going to be keeping the CSP heroes alive. Fractal going crazy. Throwing Fire Strikes. Swinging his hammer. Getting some kills. Shark getting that kill. Throwing out the Concussion Mine. Getting another. And with no Muskies heroes here, they're going to be able to hold this and take the King's Row map. The CSP Bears showing why King's Row is their favorite. A clutch hold there, I think. From yeah, the you know, that was incredible. We saw CSP pull it together over time. The Muskies were not able to replicate what CSP was able to do with their overtime push onto that last checkpoint. So for play of the game here, we see this excellent Blizzard completely turning the tide of the fight, getting a quadruple kill. 
lining them up just like fish in a barrel. Yeah, and it was that fight felt like it lasted years, and they managed to clean up really well. Just click on those heads and like swap the SP bears. Excellent job there from that blizzard. And CSP, they have some momentum now, but they're still down a map. So right now, the Muskies have two to CSP Bears one. And now the Muskies, we have not seen them select the map. We'll have to see what they choose. And we will have that and some more great CSP Overwatch action after a short little break. Don't go anywhere. First to three. Best of two. Yeah, they're smoking something. What's the term? Hold up. All <laughs> those guys are just hilarious. So they they dipped. They thought this was done already instead of a five series. They didn't realize it was best of three, and so half their team just left, and now they just got everybody back. We get the weirdest teams, I'm swear. Yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah. They don't have a clue. What? Come on, you. I don't think that they know that it's right. That they're just being told that it's right. They're still scratching their heads, coach. I don't think they've ever cycled it right. Yeah. They just did was five matches, period. Yeah. Well, look at the rest of the... No, no, but look at the rest of their scores from prior, though. If you take a look at that... That's how they've been playing. Literally, they're not lying. The last, the past maps that they've been played, they've been doing it wrong. They've been doing three matches instead of fives. So. It's just what it is. Hey, come on, man. When we first started, we were. Oh, I would, um, I don't know. Hang on. That would be great, and I think they have that, but we... We're experiencing technical difficulties. We will be right back. No worries. Yeah, so unfortunately what had happened was they thought, uh, the other team thought that they were uh, done for the game. They have not been playing all five matches, <laughs> apparently their last games. So we're just re regrouping everybody. Yeah, these things do happen from time to time, unfortunately, but hopefully we'll be back soon with some excellent Overwatch action. As you should, sir. As you should.
Traveling to Hanamura. Initiating match. Welcome back, everyone. The Muskies have opted to play Hanamura, a rather tricky 2CP map. As, you know, on that last point on Hanamura, the defense spawn is extremely close to that control point, and you have to really win that fight and hold firm if you want any shot at taking it. It looks like the Muskies are opting for another brawl comp here. We have the Ryan Zarya coming out. They're looking to, of course, again, get get close to the enemy team and really get those swings in. They're also going for the Torbjorn. I'm interested to see where this Torbjorn will set up his turret on this. Most likely, I imagine he'll set it up on that balcony up there. It's typically very difficult for a lot of heroes unless you have flyers to get up there and deal with that. CSP, they're going to have to make sure they deal with that, but CSP, they got to be feeling good. They just got the win on King's Row. The Muskies opting for Hanamura, a map they feel comfortable in, and CSP, they're locked and loaded. They're ready to go. They're rolling out of their spawn. Fractal jumping and rejoicing as he knows this is the time to go. Teleporter going in. CSP jumping onto the point, but immediately the Muskies dealing out some big damage, not able to deal with that turret. Dolphin Man swinging his hammer, cleaning up the rest of the CSP bears. That teleporter was a death trap. Yeah, the turret from the Torb, plus the uh, turrets from the Symmetra as well, just created a, a trap that the CSP bears could not escape. Yeah, they waltzed right in there, and the Muskies, I'm sure that is exactly what they wanted. Jumping in with those Symmetra turrets and that Torb turret, the bonus damage there, CSP, they didn't know what hit them. Now they might be more prepared, we'll see. Yeah, let's see. They're opting to teleport onto the high ground here instead of going directly into point. Looks like the Lucia was caught out a little bit. Gonna have to be very careful unless that Torb tournament could get some kills, but a great fire strike coming out from Fractal. Able to get one of the musky supports. And here they go. Immortality field out, but with a huge purple from the musky CSP. They're gonna be forced to fall back. They're gonna have to be so careful. Purple does wear off. That prevented the healing from coming out. Here comes that Symmetra wall blocking off CSP from themselves so they can't fire across it and they're so dangerously low. But Dolphin Man misplaying, flying off the map. CSP, they have a couple of heroes here but they're just getting cleaned up. The second they go on that point, those Symmetra turrets deal just too much damage. Yeah, and Muskies did an excellent job of just using the uh, whole map to their advantage, cutting them off through the middle and also not allowing them to push in through the turrets. Also, I'd like to note Reaper was behind that whole fight was not able to really get any value yeah and that grenade we saw from the side of the muskies that connected on to like five csp heroes that really took the wind out of csp's sails and honestly they never recovered from that when it came time to jump in so teleporter out once again they're opting for a little bit of a different approach dropping onto the right side but with a shatter comboed with the molten core there's gonna be a lot of damage but csp they stand back up they're ready Dropping the Shatter, but Fractal getting taken out by that Molten Core. That's just so much damage if you stand anywhere near it. DSP, they had a Symmetra Wall of their own, decide to drop it. We also see the Beat being dropped by the CSP Lucio, and now they've got some big damage. Sharp just cleaning house with the fully charged laser, dealing some big damage. But meanwhile, the CSP backline getting jumped on. Soren going right back. Shark with that heavy damage fractal taking matters into his own hands taking out Soren but the turrets too much for fractal and the rest of his team yeah and Soren made a huge play there he was able to take out fractal almost 1v1 I believe which is the ideal for some match the one-on-one -on -one with one other person and then your your main attack yeah. starts doing especially if that person is a tank you can charge up that laser so quickly and start dealing out that full 180 damage per second and the Symmetra's really well, I think. Yeah, Roasted Banan, he has the grab here. I mean, looking to use that this fight. Fractal, it's very low there. You're gonna have to be so careful if you are Fractal Soaring as well. Gets very low, but Ruby Swift went in a little too far, but Dolphin Man jumps in with an excellent shatter. The CSP Bears got so low, but that Immortality Field kept them alive for a little bit longer, so CSP doesn't completely die from that. But Roasted Banan dropping the grab here, cleaning up the rest of the CSP Bears. 
I would question the use there. I feel like they had won that fight otherwise, but man, it did the job. CSP crumbling there at the gates. 13 seconds left. CSP, they're gonna have to move quick if they wanna get to this point. Nine seconds, eight. They have to keep their eyes on the clock, make sure they connect. For overtime, Fractal getting very low. He has to get moving. Looks like the Death Blossom is going to be popped out, but with the excellent purple on a grenade there, it really stopped that momentum, and the, the CSP Bears just weren't able to make it in time. They just got picked off on their way. The Muskies, they did such a good job knowing what the clock was that Grav actually added a lot of value for them, right? Because they were able to use that. It caused a lot of the CSP heroes to take much longer to respawn. They got all picked off there. They weren't able to run, rejoin their team. So CSP wasn't really able to mount a proper offense to get to that point. Yeah, and they didn't have enough time to really get a plan together for that Death Blossom. That was their only ult in that last fight, and they needed to get value out of it. Yeah, them. and when they had that little time on the board, their only option was to run right down the middle, right into the Muskies' clutches. So, a great hole from the side of the Muskies. Clearly, they are comfortable on this map. And now CSP, it is their turn to hold this point. They need to hold this, or this match will go to the way of the Muskies. Yeah, and what the Muskies were pretty good at when they were holding here, what you're going to want to look at it from CSP, is alternating between there's that little patch near the window where you hold, and you have to be careful of someone sitting there and hitting you, and hitting your Reinhardt hold, essentially. And that's what the CSP Bears did with D.Va. D.Va was right on that window you see there, shooting down, and that's how CSP Bears would get it, were able to get actually one pick. Um, so... The CSP Bears are going to be looking to defend in a similar manner and alternate between and be able to, you know, kind of maintain here. We see Shark on the Junkrat, Fractal on the Reinhardt. That's going to be a lot of damage right up the middle there. So I think, I, I really think the Muskies are going to have a difficult time going through, but they do have the Symmetra. So they there's a good chance they just teleport right past the CSP defense. And they're going with the Hog as well. Yeah, so looking, looking to get a pick, because if they get that pick, they only need one tick to win this game and win this match. So if they're able to get that, it is all there. CSP, they're going to have to be so careful. Shark does fall, but Soldier able to get the revenge. But here comes the Muskies charging in, taking out the Soldier and the rest of the backline. Fractal is left alone on an island. Team kill going the way of the Muskies. And this match goes to the Muskies. Man, they charged in, got immediately onto those CSP heroes, and Fractal wasn't able to do his job and get in front. Soak up some of that damage. He got separated from his team. And Dolphin Man, excellent job there, as I said. And he gets play of the game deservedly. Yeah, I'll, albeit it looks like from the defense. Yeah, he but got nano boosted like, here. Yeah. He swung around. And this really turned out to be CSP's last real push that they were able to muster to get to that point. Yeah, absolutely. And they, I think overall on that map, the Muskies were just able to regroup better and kind of, you know, not completely collapse when, when there are a couple picks, which is really, really difficult. Yeah, you know, really a heartbreaking loss for CSP. We saw them pull it together on King's Row, but they weren't able to muster enough to push past the Muskies here on the map. They chose Hanamura. So, next, this week, looking at the rest of the CSP esports schedule, we have Rocket League that happened previously today, and League of Legends on Tuesdays. Valorant will also be coming at some point this week. Just stay in tune with the CSP Esports Twitter to find out when that will be coming to you. Hearthstone will also be happening this Thursday, and that is a great action-packed week of CSP Esports for you. And make sure to tune in there. Like I said before, check in with the CSP Esports Twitter for any scheduling changes or to find out when these events take place. My name is Hans Swanson, and I'm Jules Makovac. It has been a pleasure casting for you this evening. Have a great rest of your night, everyone.